Hey, Highlanders, so good to be with you. So grateful that you have chosen to carve out some of your time, wherever you're watching from, to be with us today. And we are excited to be with you. I want to start off our time together by introducing myself. Um, if we haven't met before, my name is Jason Perkins. Actually, even if we have met before, my name is still Jason Perkins, and I am grateful that you chose to be with us today. Um, I want to just explain something really quick as we get started. Um, I am a dual citizen. I'm a citizen of both Australia and also the United States. And so I have what I would call a very mixed up accent. So over the next few minutes, as you're listening, you're probably going to hear a little bit of Australian coming out, a little bit of American maybe. I call it the Russell Crowe version of the Australian accent. It just means that I lived in the US for far too long. As we kick off things today, I want you to think back to your earliest memory of a goal that you set. Maybe when you were a kindergarten student, maybe you were in high school, maybe you were in university or you were going to TAFE, or maybe it was when you were a young adult or maybe even as an adult, the earliest memory of a goal that you set. I want you to think back right now, maybe even turn to somebody else in the living room, maybe in the coffee shop or wherever you're watching from and let them know what was the earliest goal that you can remember. I think the earliest goal that I can remember was trying to make a goal as a little kid when I first started playing soccer. My parents encouraged me to play a lot of sports and I love sports. But one of the things that I remember was the earliest soccer season that I can think back to and I hadn't scored a goal yet. And I so badly wanted to score a goal. And I eventually that season scored a goal. I don't know what your goal was as you think back to your earliest memory, but here's what I know to be true. Right now, no matter how old you are, how young you are, doesn't matter where you live, we all have a global goal because of COVID-19. And the global goal that we all have is this one right here. We've got to flatten the curve. You've probably heard that phrase before. Maybe you know what flatten the curve means, but essentially we've got to slow down. Our global goal as global citizens is to slow down the spread of the coronavirus and they call it flattening the curve. Now, here's a curve that I need to flatten. It's my stomach and that's why I do so much Pilates. It's a big curve on the front of my body. Maybe you've got one as well. And I've been working on flattening this curve for a long period of time. But all joking aside, in this season that we're living in in history, we all have this global goal of trying to flatten the curve of the coronavirus. Now, here's some of the things that we've been suggested that will help us to flatten the curve. Things like wash your hands, social distancing, that's why we're probably watching this online today. And maybe you decided not to come to a place or to gather together with other people because of this suggestion of social distancing. Staying home, that's probably where you're watching this from today. Even working from home, more and more people are not going into work. And there are so many other things that have been suggested for us to help flatten the curve. Now, today is not some sort of public service announcement. We're at church. And so we're not just talking about flattening the curve. We're talking about a global goal that I think is even more important than the goal of flattening the curve. And you might ask yourself, what could that possibly be? Right now, what could be greater than the global goal of flattening the curve? Well, I wanna take you way back to the first century, to the time when Jesus was alive. In fact, it's moments before Jesus was about to leave this earth and go back to his Father in heaven. Just before he left this earth, he gave his followers a global goal. He gave his followers, those that were followers of Jesus in the first century, a goal that he wanted all of them to accomplish. And it was a global goal. Matthew records these final words of Jesus for us as Jesus describes this goal. He says to his disciples on a mountainside, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. He says to them, hey, my heavenly father, your heavenly father, God has given me all authority. And because of that, he says, therefore, here's the goal, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And here's how I want you to accomplish this goal. I want you 
to teach them to obey everything I've commanded you. And here's a promise I'm going to give you as you go out to accomplish the goal. Surely I will be with you. I am with you always, Jesus said, to the very end of the age. So although our global goal right now as a citizen of this planet is to flatten the curve, if you're a follower of Jesus from the very first century, from some of the final words that Jesus gave his first followers, we've all been given a global goal. And here's how I would summarize it. The global goal is this, to go and make disciples of Jesus in all nations. Just like flattening the curve right now seems to be a very difficult, maybe even impossible goal for our planet to achieve, I'm convinced that these guys on that mountainside probably looked at each other and maybe even looked around and maybe they even said to Jesus, are you kidding me? There's 11 of us on the side of this mountain, Jesus, and you want us to go and make disciples of every nation? Jesus, do you see how many of us are here right now? That's an impossible goal. In fact, they probably said it's too big of a goal to accomplish alone. And that's why I think Jesus gave the promise that he would never leave them, he would never forsake them, that he would always be with them. But as they began to go out trying to accomplish this goal that Jesus gave them, they began to move from Jerusalem where they were at when Jesus gave the goal, and they started going all around the then known world, mostly around the Mediterranean Sea, sharing this good news of Jesus with people in cities all around the world at that time. And little groupings of people, little gatherings of people, gatherings like we're not allowed to do currently, but little gatherings of people started to form and little churches started to form around this big idea of putting their faith and hope and trust in the person of Jesus. And disciples, followers of Jesus began to be made. These 11 guys on the side of the mountain when Jesus gave that global goal were obedient to what Jesus asked them to do. And all of the sudden they began to go and make disciples, make followers of Jesus all around the world at that time. One of the cities that they went to was a city called Ephesus. It was a port city on the Mediterranean Sea in modern day Turkey today. And this was a well-known city. This particular city actually was known because of its commerce and because of religious dialogue that would go on in that city in that season. And in that city, a small group of Jesus followers, disciples of Jesus began to meet and they established a small church. One of the guys that first went to the city was a guy named Paul, an early follower of Jesus in the first century. After his first trip to Ephesus, he actually went back to Ephesus on a second trip and he stayed there for a number of years to help establish the church as it continued to grow and make disciples with this big global goal that Jesus had given his early followers. Years later, Paul is almost at the end of his life and he's in the city of Rome and he's a prisoner because of being a follower of Jesus and he writes a letter of encouragement back to the people in Ephesus. In this letter, he outlines for us what I think are the steps for us to accomplish this global goal to go and make disciples in all nations that Jesus gave those first century followers. Paul's letter reads in this way. He says, therefore... I, speaking of himself, Paul, a prisoner, remember he was in Rome because he was a follower of Jesus. He had been in prison for serving the Lord. He begs these followers of Jesus in Ephesus to lead a life worthy of your calling for you have been called by God. He's reminding them that you've been given a goal. Jesus gave us this calling. Jesus gave us this global goal to go and make disciples in all nations Make followers of Jesus in every single nation. This is the calling that you need to lead yourself in. Not wait around for somebody else to lead you. Not wait for a small group leader to lead you. Not wait for a pastor in the church to lead you. But you, he begged them, lead a life that is worthy of this calling that has been given to you. Then Paul goes on to describe for them how they can live out this calling. He starts with some practical things. He says, always be humble and gentle. 
Be patient with each other, making allowances for each other's faults because of your love, making allowances for each other's fault when the live stream falls apart or YouTube doesn't transmit the signal as quite the quality that it should have been transmitted at. Be able to be patient. Make allowances for each other. In this day and age that we're living in, we need to be people that are humble, that are gracious, that are kind and are patient and making allowances for each other. He goes on to say, make every effort to keep yourselves united in spirit, binding yourselves together. Here's the deal. In this day and age we're living in, in this time of social distancing, Paul would express to us, and I think he's saying to us today, as followers of Jesus, as a church, we've got to make every effort to stay united. Make every effort to click on that Zoom call or click on that FaceTime call or click on whatever it is that keeps you united and keeps you connected at this time. Make every effort, make every effort, do whatever it takes, Paul is saying, to stay together. Why? For there is one body and one spirit, just as you have been called to one glorious hope of the future. Just as you have been given one glorious goal by the very person of Jesus to go and make disciples in all nations, this global goal that Jesus gave his first followers, even now you are one body, you are one spirit, you have one glorious hope for the future. Don't lose sight of the hope, I think Paul would say to us. He says, although we've been given one big goal, although we've been given one big glorious hope for the future, all of us though have different things, different gifts that God has given us to accomplish the goal. Paul goes on to say, however, he has given each one of you, Jesus, a special gift through the generosity of Christ. Paul would say, Jesus is so generous. He's given every single one of us special gifts. And now he goes on, on to outline these special gifts. He says, now these gifts that Christ gave to the church, some will be apostles, some prophets, the, some will be evangelists, some pastors and some teachers. And I want them to have a specific responsibility, Paul says. Here's the responsibility. Their responsibility is singular. It's singular. It's one thing. It's to equip and who are they to equip? Who are they to build up? He says their responsibility is to equip God's people. That's you, that's me, to do his work and to build up the church, the body of Christ. These pastors, these teachers, these evangelists, these people with this list of gifts that Paul outlines for us, for so long as I grew up in the church, I thought of these people that had these gifts as the ones who did all of the work of the ministry. But Paul would say, no, Jason, you got it wrong. They're not to do all of the work of the ministry. I gave them those gifts so that they can equip you and they can equip me as God's people to do the work of the ministry, to accomplish the global goal of making disciples in every single nation. So let's get practical as we wrap up our time together. When it comes to accomplishing this goal, I'm convinced that teamwork is what makes the dream work. Maybe you've heard that before in some other setting, but teamwork, no matter what goal you're trying to accomplish, especially goals that are big like this global goal of making disciples in every nation, teamwork makes the dream work. So the first thing you need to do is understand the goal. The goal, if you're a follower of Jesus, is to go and make disciples in every nation. Now you need to discover what your role is in accomplishing that role. Some of you have been given certain gifts. Some of you have been given certain relationships. Some of you have been given certain positions. You're in places that I will never be able to be and you're in places that others in the church will never be able to be. You need to discover what your role is in accomplishing the goal. And then finally, number three, leverage your role. Take whatever role God has given you, take whatever position God has given you, whatever gifts, whatever skills, whatever abilities God has given to you, uniquely given to you, leverage those for all of us to be able to accomplish the goal. The way I like to summarize it is simply this. When I think of what Paul was saying, I think you can summarize it in this simple statement. Leverage your role for the good of the whole so we can all reach the goal. 
We all want to reach this global goal that God gave us through his son, Jesus, to go and make disciples in every nation. How do we do it? We leverage our role for the good of the whole so we can all reach the goal. Let me pray for you. God, thank you for our time together. Thank you for the technology and the gift that we can use of being able to communicate your word. Even though we may not be together physically, we can be together spiritually. And God, I thank you for this this word that Paul gave the church in that first century in that city of Ephesus that's so relevant and so timely for us today. Even in the context in the world that we're living, would you help us, God, to understand the goal Would you help us to discover the role that you want us to play? And then would you help us to leverage our role for the good of the whole so that we can all reach this goal of seeing the world follow Jesus and become disciples of him? I pray in Jesus' name, amen. Well, thanks for joining us again today on Highlands Church Online. After a great experience, we hope you've had uh, through our worship and our word. We've got... Here with us again, uh, Jason Perkins, who you just heard a great message from him. Uh, And we get to ask a few more questions to to see how we can apply best that message and and maybe hear a little bit more uh, from him and his heart there. So thanks, Jason, for joining us for this again. Thanks for having me. This is great. And so glad that you chose to be with us today as well. Yeah, cool. So one question I've got for you is you talked there about having uh, people that have gifts in it or a role to play yep. uh, for the whole to, to get to the goal, which is yep. great. How would you uh, suggest that people discover what their gifts or their role is and, yeah. or, and how we can grow in that role? Yeah, absolutely. There are two things that have been helpful for me over the years. First thing has been to, to honestly just go to God and ask Him, hey, would you reveal to me the unique special gifts that you have given me, the skills, the abilities, giftings that you've given me. Would you make that obvious to me? And I think that's a great place to start. Just praying that prayer and asking God, reveal to me the gifts and the abilities and the skills that you've given to me. The second thing that's been really helpful for me over the years is to ask other people what they see. A great question is, what's it like to be on the other side of me? You've probably heard that question before. And I think that's a great way to ask that question when it comes to our gifts and abilities and our skills, because others will see things in you and can affirm that thing that God has given you and allows you to get more clarity on it. Yeah, that's really helpful, including God and other people in our own journey. It's like, that's how it's supposed to be. Absolutely. Yeah, Yeah, absolutely. That's great. Yeah. Another one, what what about those people, and there might be some at home, and I've definitely been here, that feel, I don't know if I'm good enough or my effort will be helpful or I don't know enough, I'm not the right person. Uh, What would you say to someone who kind of feels like, oh, I don't know if I can do that? Yeah. At the end of Jesus' statement that we went through in the message where he gave that big global goal, go make disciples in all nations, he left us with a promise. And this, I think, is so key when we're accomplishing the goal. He said, and I will be with you always. I'll never leave you. And I'll be honest with you, oftentimes I find myself thinking, I'm not up to the challenge. I'm not up to the task. And the reality is that's actually a true statement. I'm not. But the fact that Christ, his Holy Spirit, is never going to leave me, will always be with me, is the one that gives me the power and the strength to accomplish the goal that he's given us. Yeah, that's so cool. That's a good reassurance there. Yeah, absolutely. Nice. Uh, And maybe one more. um, Have you ever seen a good example of someone who's leveraged their role? Yeah. Yeah, I would say lots of examples and people leveraging their role to accomplish the goal. You know, I've seen lots of great examples, but... I think the very best example I've ever seen is in the person of Jesus. He, being part of the Godhead, the Trinity, chose to honestly take one for the team in a sense, the greatest team player ever. Paul wrote these words that Jesus didn't equate being God as something to use to his own advantage, Mm -hmm. but he humbled himself, came down to earth, became a man, dwelt among us so that we could all experience what God was really like. And because of that, we all now have the ability to have a relationship with God, which is the goal. And so I think Jesus is the greatest example of someone leveraging their role as part of the Godhead, as part of the Trinity, but doing it for the good of the whole, coming down to earth so that we could all reach the goal of a relationship with our Heavenly Father. 
that's the greatest example, and I think it's one that we can then try to emulate as we accomplish the goal he's given us. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. That's so good. Thanks so much. Yeah, no worries. Look, I hope that you've enjoyed your experience today with Highlands Online, and, and thank again, Jason, for that. Look, I hope these questions have been helpful in, in provoking some more thought or inspiring some questions and encouraging you to continue growing closer to Jesus. Uh, maybe you've got some questions of your own just to keep thinking of or putting them in the comments there and our host might be able to help point you in the right direction as well. Mm. Uh, but I'd love you to think about how, how you can leverage your role, your gifts, what you're here on earth for, uh, for the good of the whole, yeah. that we might be able to reach the goal together uh, yeah. because you are here on purpose, you do matter and... Uh, that's why we believe in you so much. We pray for you all the time and we really appreciate that you're joining together with us and hundreds and hundreds of people around our region and around the world as we worship Jesus as well. So thank you so much again for joining us today. Hope you have a great week and we will see you next time. God bless.